and Mo Crypt. All right, Chris, to introduce hey. yourself, please give us a give us a little bit of background. I wasn't planning on this being an AMA, but hey, the guys want to know. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm no really worries. Well, uh, well, well, thanks everybody for having me. And uh, yeah, my brother and I, uh, we we spent a number of years in the defense world, and we had an ammunition manufacturing company, and you know have seen all the sensitivities and the supply chain inefficiencies that have that have gone on uh, in our business across you know the better part of uh, two decades and uh, you know with RWAs becoming more popular uh, we decided about two years ago to kind of pursue um, tokenizing real ammunition damn how do you go about that like what's the first step in tokenizing and why are we tokenizing ammunition well, like, like I said, it, it's going to basically, we, we hope for it to at least um, create kind of market stability. I don't know if you, any, any of you guys are, are shooters or, or enthusiasts, uh, but during times of war, during times of civil unrest, a lot of times people will, you know, have a knee-jerk reaction and, and buy a bunch of ammo and then, you know, then lo and behold, the, the shelves are empty and a lot of times... Uh, manufacturers have difficulties basically catching up with uh, demand and by us tokenizing ammunition it kind of is going to safeguard against that and we're going to have uh, you know a, a reserve facility and probably multiple facilities uh, that are uh, devoted towards um, backing those those uh, those tokens with with you know with, with asset Wow, this is actually pretty wild. Like, holy crap. I, I, as someone who goes to the range occasionally, mm -hmm. um, I do notice this problem quite a bit. Um, I'll, I'll like show up and I need like either like some nine mil or I need some five, five, six or something. And it's like never there, especially in times of like, you know, high political tension or talks of like, you know, bans happening and yada, yada. So this is really, really fascinating, man. Sweet, sweet idea. Yeah, it's like my two, two favorite things in the world, ammunition and RWAs. So <laughs> congrats. Well, thank you. Yeah. We're, we're actually really excited about it and hope it, uh, hope it takes off where, I mean, we're, um, you know, we're getting a lot of interest. We were actually out of East Denver, and everybody that we uh, we shared the project with, it it's it, they were they were kind of put them put them on their heels a little bit, and they were just you know wide eyed and really eager to learn more about it. And uh, you know, thankful that the uh, that the the Web three community is so welcoming and um, you know excited about the project. Yeah, this is. Well, I we, we, say... know this, we, we know where this ends, dude. When freedom starts becoming a salient issue, like at this level, MO is kind of like the next logical step. Like not advocating or anything, but like that's the thing. That's why we have a free society. So like, big big claps. Love this. Uh, Tyler, yeah, you... this is so. No, this is seriously so cool. Like we so at RWA World. I don't know if you've you've come across our platform yet. We're aggregating all the RWA projects, issuers, marketplaces, etc. So we haven't come across you guys yet. So that's why I'm super excited that Wolf had you here today so we can add you to our database. Um, we've seen a ton of wild assets that are being tokenized, including my buddy Cody here, who's tokenizing uranium. I gotta say, ammo, I don't even know where I would fit you. Like, what, what would you consider yourself? Like, is this, a, this isn't really a commodity, is it? Like, what, what is ammo in, in terms of like a financial instrument? How would you define yourself? You know that that's a good question. Uh, we we often ask ourselves the same thing, but uh, you know it, it's obviously consumable, so it's unique in that regard. But um, you know we, it, I guess we're kind of creating a new mold in a way. Um, there's not a project like us out there, and uh, we're just um, you know trying to really explore a lot of different avenues and see exactly where we do fit in. Cool, man. Well, yeah, let's let's connect after for sure, so we can get to know your team a little bit and, and get you in our database. Like from from my side, I'm interested in you know we talk about physical delivery a lot. So if I go out and I buy some of your tokenized ammunition, uh, am I able to get some ammo mailed to my house? How does that work? If I want to redeem it, uh, that's exactly how it works. So uh, we we actually have kind of a unique uh, a unique model set up. Uh, it's a two token system. So. We have a utility token, which basically grants you access to be able to purchase the asset token. So the utility token um, and the asset token itself can be, uh, you know, obviously bought, traded, sold uh, independently. But in order to be able to redeem, you need both. And when you get both, you actually, uh, you know, deposit them and um, 
like a NFT is created, and that's a, that's your redemption token. So the redemption token is actually uh, what you use in order to be able to get ammo delivered directly to your house. Obviously, uh, the jurisdictions and uh, the shipping regulations to to, to ban places uh, play a role in that. But we we have you know all that mapped out from our previous business, I and mean, we used to do a lot of export work. Uh, so. Um, we know the countries that that are, that are restricted. We know all the shipping regulations, but we also, um, you know, it, it, it's possible. So pretty much anywhere in the world that's not in the ban list, uh, if they meet the minimum requirements for redemption and have uh, have the ability to receive it, then we we can ship it pretty much anywhere. And you're not a Fed, <laughs> right? Exactly. Okay. All right. Just thought I'd thought I'd ask. Yeah, we, I, I we got a, have, We actually have very. Uh, it's going to be a very stringent uh, redemption uh, KYC and, and and AML process. So we have to we have to do that in order to be able to comply because uh, we're kind of uh, you know we, we 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 fall sort of in the, under the regulations of the, the the ATF and 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 obviously the SEC. So it's uh, yeah, it, we're we're kind of double uh, double jerks if you know what I mean. Yeah, I that like I don't think I've ever heard that combination. It's like the ATF and the SEC. You don't really hear those two in combination. Yeah, that we, we have My two uh, we have to, we have to comply with both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so real quick, guys, I just want to introduce. I think Sam. I think we got Sam behind the Maverick account. Um, Sam, uh, is that you behind the Maverick account? Nope. Who's behind the Maverick account? Maverick, what's up? Hey guys, my name's Alex Davis, founder of Maverick. Oh, so sorry, doing? Alex, my fault. How are you? <laughs> good, good. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. What do you make of this uh, ammunition on the blockchain? I mean, as a <laughs> uh, as a fan of firearms, uh, used to be in the military. It's uh, it's quite interesting. Um, I, you know, it's just it, it's it's. It's interesting to think about how you actually would redeem ammunition considering all the different states' laws. I feel like it's a very big place to like invest in the price of ammo. Yeah, was, that's probably how I imagine most of the use cases would be, right? Right, and ammo crypt because people like I got an ammo guy. You know, unfortunately, I lost all my guns in a boating accident, of course. But you know, there's an ammo guy. You know, if I'm ever wanting to just, <laughs> you know, just chat with him for fun. But, um, you know, for folks who are wanting to maybe, I know you've got to be careful about how you talk about this, but like speculating on the price of ammo, right? That seems to be a thing that I would be interested in doing, but it's kind of hard because I got to take physical delivery of this stuff, right? So like if I do go out to my ammo guy and I talk to him and I get some ammo, I got to go out and meet somebody to resell it, right? So that's like a pretty manual process. Are you guys looking to facilitate this sort of secondary market where people can, in fact, uh, you know, basically buy their ammo for a rainy day, and then if they decide they don't need it, then sell it at a higher price later. Uh, you know, it's, and like you said, we we obviously do have to be uh, careful on what we what we can share and, and what we do. Uh, you know, can and can't promise, but people are free to do what they want, and they uh, they can speculate all they want. They can they can buy it, they can hang on to it, they can redeem some of it, um, or you know, or sell it when uh, you know. Prices go up. But one of the interesting things that we we found, just given our business and the way that we've done uh, business all over the world, is uh, there's no real central pricing index for what ammunition costs. I mean, in in the U.S., we're probably paying the, the lowest prices in the world for ammunition. So when somebody goes to buy ammunition in another country, you know, as long as they can get it, it's a it's exorbitantly higher. It's, it's very bizarre. Uh, but this is one of the things that we're trying to help against and, and create more of like a, uh, a sort of a central pricing index on what actually ammunition costs across the board. And uh, I think we can really benefit um, benefit the world and the world market uh, if, we, if we actually uh, succeed and be able to do that. Hmm. Uh, just Sorry, to uh, <laughs> bring this up real quick. You have a huge opportunity to throw some pretty incredible events at a couple gun ranges. So I'm just going to put it out there. It's an idea. Hey, let me know what you think about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, if um, you didn't eat all of my weapons, I would be there 100%. <laughs> he, he said events at a gun range. Uh, that's not another two things maybe like you don't really hear on, an, on, on the daily or on the, you know, hey. 
this is different. Web3 is different out here, man. Yeah, we're, Wait, we're, so- we're in, when we were in Denver, we actually did host a, uh, a range day for some uh, some investors. And, uh, you know, they were, they were in from all over the world, actually. And uh, some of them never held a gun before, shot a gun. But they were, uh, you know... Excuse the pun. They were really blown away. Uh, it was it was it was a, it was a fun event, and uh, you know we got were really real, well received. <laughs> Dude, I like this. I like everything about this guy. I like everything about this project. This is this is this is awesome, man. Like like man, I'm sad I missed you in Denver, man. Me too. This, this is right up my beat. Uh, to be there next year. I can hear Tyler's it. voice is hype too. I, I love it. I love, you can hear me and Tyler just in our voice. Like I, I had to stay quiet for a minute. Dude, I'm getting so giddy over here too. I'm just like, woo! Yeah, we, um, <laughs> we're, we're really excited about it, and we're going to be. We'll be in Denver next year. Uh, we, we, we plan to be, and then we're going to be in Consensus uh, come May as well. And uh, we're planning to go to Dubai as well in 2049. Question. Um, oh, well, Emily, you're going to have to let me know when you're out here because we're based in Dubai. Okay, Let's great. Go. Let's go. I have a quick, actually, I, have, I do have a quick question. So, Tyler, if he's thought, like, if, if, if um, Chris is talking about, like, a, an actual, like, date, like a marketplace, right? There is no actual marketplace. And, Cody, maybe you could speak to this as well. For, like, because I know that there's, like, there's no actual, like, it's really hard to get, like, pricing data for, like, uranium as well. So, is there an oppor- a huge opportunity here for something like this to like to essentially birth like a, an actual like new industry? I guess in a way, you know what I mean? For sure. I mean, it's always a question of liquidity, right? I mean, markets need a variety of different actors on each different side of the trade to make this happen. So I imagine Ammo and his team probably have some thoughts around how they're gonna you know bootstrap this this marketplace um and that kind of gets to one of the other questions i wanted to get to at some point which is i want to understand the utility token and how that fits into your your ecosystem because i i'm a bit skeptical of utility tokens especially in the rwa space and and would love to to understand a little bit more about how that fits into it um but yeah like i'm sure cody's seen this with uranium when you have a marketplace that's just like there's just not a lot of uh, there's not a spot market at all for uranium prior to what Cody and his team has been able to put together. I would love to see a digital ammunition market that's not just all these different, you know, uh, you can buy ammo online, obviously, but something in a decentralized, open and permissionless environment like this, I mean, the potential there is really, really cool. Yeah, Ale- uh, uh, Alex, go for it. Yeah, you were talking about utility tokens in a in an RWA space. Um, it really depends on like kind of how you're doing it. I think every single form of asset that's going to be traded that's backed by a physical good in the real world will eventually end up being a security. And when you when it's a security, you've got to comply with securities laws. So you got to use some form of security token standard. Um, but when it comes to facilitating uh, services for RWAs, that doesn't necessarily require that the that the token of the um, of the platform is a security token. So for example, actually Maven Finance is down below. This is a little bit of a shill, but um, uh, Maven Finance will be launching on the Maverick network and it's a lending and borrowing platform that will be on our blockchain that facilitates lending on RWA tokens. Uh, the token for Maven as opposed to Maverick is a governance and utility token that essentially governs the entire DAO process for what types of collateral can be used, what types of, what's the business model, um, the algorithm, you could use it. To, it's actually could be used to upgrade the smart contracts as, uh, there's built in governance. So it's, it's a full DAO through and through, not a DAO facade. Everything is on chain. It controls d- treasury deployments, on chain oracles for data, etc. So there's, there's, it's one element to have the, the security token, the RWA token, which will be a security. And then there's going to be like, a ton of facilitating services around RWAs. So the commodity itself might be, you know, obviously we'll have regulation, but then how you use that commodity in either indexes, exchanging, and exchanges, um, staking, lending, borrowing, that can be facilitated by utility tokens. That's super interesting. I got so many. Yeah, I got to. I got to formulate these questions in my head right now. There's like a million going through my mind. William, go for it. <laughs> I have some. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, Emma, you go ahead. I, is it? Am I rocking? No, no, I got you. Can I, I hear you? 
All right, cool, cool. Uh, they, uh, so Tyler and uh, Maverick just kind of touched on what I was going to ask uh, Ammo here. Um, I, I the utility token sounds like a governance token. Is that is that what it's like? Is that what it's it's kind of leaning to be? I uh, yes, I think that's basically what we what we had in mind when we created it. But uh, just to give you a little bit of idea about how the model would work, so you know we have uh, we have a set amount of tokens that have been minted. Um, There'll never be more tokens outstanding than what we have in our reserves as far as ammunition goes, so we'll never be upside down if there's a mass liquidation event or anything like that, or if anybody, or a mass redemption event, um, people are going to be able to get their ammo, they're not going to be sitting there waiting for it and, you know, uh, trying to collect on empty promises, uh, so that's, you know, that kind of builds integrity to the system, but we have, uh, so we have the utility token, and, and the main function of the utility token is going to be for the, the manufacturers that we work with. So we're a manufacturer. We have the ability to uh, to mint the asset tokens. But when when a manufacturer wants to uh, put their ammunition into our ecosystem, they, they'll buy the utility token, give it to us, right? We'll mint the caliber tokens, and then we'll give them the, the, the actual caliber tokens. So they're able to sell those caliber tokens and receive, you know, obviously instant liquidity for their product. Uh, and we manage the, we actually manage the reserves and manage the, um, or, or through a third party logistics company, we, we manage the, um, you know, the, or the order fulfillment if, if anybody chooses to redeem. So basically utility token goes in caliber or, or asset tokens go out. And then the, the, the asset tokens are on the open market. And then once they're redeemed or once somebody chooses to buy them and then once they're redeemed, they have to buy the utility token and, and have the asset token as well to be able to get ammunition. Say that last part one more time. They have to have the asset token and the utility so the, token, you said? So the utility token and the asset token are combined for a, uh, a redemption token. And once that happens and, you know, they go through KYC and, uh, you know, AML, then they're actually able to physically get their ammunition and it's shipped out to them. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is, I feel like the legal framework aspect of all of this is probably going to be like your biggest hurdle. Yes. Uh, Could you talk about that? Like, what? Yeah. Is, how do we keep you guys from getting shut down? Where are you based? Like, I mean, this this to me seems like a lot of challenges. Uh, well, it's all built into obviously the way that was designed and the platform. But uh, we're based. Our token issuing company is based in the Caymans, and we have an operating uh, base in the in the United States as well. We primarily see the United States probably being our biggest customer as far as redemption go. There's, there's, I don't know if you guys know, but there's 100, roughly 120 million gun owners in the U.S. Uh, there's more guns in the U.S. than there are people, uh, typically. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we just see a huge, huge potential market segment for gun owners and gun enthusiasts in the U.S. I mean, the party, I, I guess when you, when you look at it from like a... Uh, party's perspective or political perspective i mean the lines are really blurred when it comes to you know when it comes to that uh as far as gun enthusiasts i mean i i know plenty of you know conservatives and plenty of liberals that you know they they all own guns so uh yeah i mean it's a huge market for us so did anyone else just like yell Skew! when he when he uh <laughs> when he said that there's more guns than people in Dude, America? I, I've had the, like, America? I've had the just, Team like, America that. song playing in my head for the last twenty five <laughs> minutes. Like it just hasn't stopped. I mean, I've heard guns don't kill people. I do. I was like, oh shit. Okay. Okay. But wait, so question. Um yeah. what about a security token offering, right? Like have you ever thought about like listing on like an INX or like um if if the US is one of your one of your biggest, like, like, air, like areas of opportunity. I mean, I feel like that has to be the way to go. Right. Uh, um, it's yeah. And, and then, uh, safe investor, I'm going to come to you right after this, but yeah, go for it. Alex. Um, go for it Chris. Okay. Yeah. So, um, as far as security token, I mean, we, we, we've considered a lot of different avenues and, and really what the, what the way that we have it right now and the, the, um, the legal advice that we've sought and 
everything, all the feedback that we've got, we've really arrived at the uh, the model that we have today, and or you know, are prepared to stick with it. But you know, obviously, laws change, regulations change. Uh, but for now, I think this is the the way that it's set up is the way that uh, we're going to proceed. Yeah, safe investor, go for it. Yep. <laughs> Hey, what's up, man? Hey, thank you for giving me the minute um, real quick. So, soon, are, are you going to target both retail and um, sellers or distributors um, or just uh, retailers that are looking to buy the ammo? Um, just just one of many questions. So really the way that we have it, the way that it's set up is, uh, is, is strictly like a, a business to consumer uh, model. So really it's going to sort of... It, it, you know, people are obviously whoever's whoever wants to you know buy the tokens are going to be able to do it. But but um, primarily, our, our our first our first priority is the the manufacturers to the consumers. This is great. I mainly ask because you're 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 killing a lot of birds with one stone. And uh, if you're doing both or leaving the option for do both or as many or as as wide of a range. Of expansion uh, in the distribution chain, uh, you're also killing the uh, the problem with currency. So they can just use your token, and then they can just exchange for whatever um, native uh, currency from whatever country they're from. So uh, this is really cool. And you missed yeah. an opportunity to say killing two birds with one bullet. I just want to point that out. Yeah, that was <laughs> Go <laughs> I saw Salamander came up. Salamander, welcome. Oh my god, I am like two hours late. Guys, I went to sleep at 8 o'clock last night. That never happened since I was like, what, 7? Um, I'm like literally a decade away. Anyways, happy to be here. Um, super excited about this topic. I'm just kind of chiming in, so you know, I'll say my, f my feedback here. And someone has probably said deep pins like three times because Scott Fu is definitely in the building. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she's excited to chat. Lots of people I see in the in the audience. Retweet the space, guys. Let's go. Thank you. Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Brad, what's good, my guy? Hello, GM fam. This is a... Uh... You know, definitely something that I can relate to, you know, being out here in Colorado where, you know, we've got a lot of real awesome gun laws. Um, you know, well, I guess one of my questions is, and I'm not sure if you covered it earlier, I apologize if you did, but I mean, are you abstracting these accounts away from essentially like, you know, can I get ammo using these ammo tokens? And if so, I mean, how are you protecting the data as far as like, who's getting ammo who's buying the ammo are they old enough is their state allowing them to purchase ammo a certain amount of rounds you're allowed to have you know those types of the um the the legalities around that aspect of it separate from the crypto okay yeah that, that's actually a good question and uh you know i'm glad you brought that up and we i don't know if we've really covered that yet or not maybe maybe indirectly but really what uh what it boils down to is so we've been in defense business for a long time. Uh, during, the, during the pandemic, uh, we actually launched a website uh, for, for e-commerce. And we had a significant business you know, on the e-commerce side for a couple of years when supplies were down. And we actually, uh, we were working the whole time and we had a stable uh, supply during those, during those hard times when, you know, everybody knows that ammo was... The price of nine mil was you know through the roof. It was you know seventy, eighty, sometimes ninety cents around, or normally that it trades around you know twenty to twenty five cents. Um, so we we had during those times uh, you know an online business, and uh, we are very familiar with all the laws and the regulations for shipping to you know restricted states. Um, so when anybody goes to redeem. The, the tokens on our platform it's 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 going to be we're trying to make it as easy as possible so we're it's going to be more of like a uh, we, we viewed it more of like an e-commerce transaction kind of like you know pay your pay your shipping pay your service and you know give us give us the redemption token and then you get the ammo but yeah we're, we're actually really familiar with all the laws and regulations regulations that um 
and restricted states for shipping. And that goes into our uh, that that all that information when anybody wants to redeem, they have to go through KYC and AML. Uh, we're using a third party for that, and we built that the the uh, the program to to have very strict uh, very strict laws for that. So, would you guys have to ship to like an FFA like dealer essentially still? Uh, some states you have to send send to an FFL. Yep, uh, California, one of them. Uh, you know, there's other states that have uh, ammunition buyers cards, and you know, they same same for like guns if they want to do that. But we're not we're obviously not in the gun space. But uh, there's certain states that offer or that require ammunition buyers cards, and uh, basically it shows that they're legal to possess and uh, own ammunition. Uh, there's, there's that, uh, so, you know, that, that all factors into the, uh, the KYC process that we have to go through for everybody when they want to redeem. Hell yeah, dude. No, that's awesome. Uh, hopefully, you know, five, five, six comes back around because it's impossible to find out here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the rounds we're actually targeting. So, uh, in the beginning, you, we're, we're going to have five different token offerings, uh, but the utility token will be, you know, used to, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be basically used for any of the five caliber. So our, our five different tokens, you'd say. Could you, Chris, could you maybe talk about that for a little bit? Cause I want to know why are the market dynamics of ammunition so wild? Why is it that we go through these periods of massive shortages and other things? I know that obviously societal unrest pay, plays like a big part, you know, during COVID, I remember trying to get nine mil was really difficult. Um, but there's also some manufacturing constraints, right? There's a lot of legal and regulatory bottlenecks. Could you talk about that? Yeah, it, you know, and that, that brings up another good point. I mean, this is something that we're trying to really kind of uh, prevent from happening. You know, if it's done right and we, you know, this thing takes off, we're going to be able to have en enough reserves to satisfy demand. Uh, and, you know, people will be able to access ammunition through through us where they couldn't get it in a big box store. Uh, but w to answer your question, manufacturing is a tricky thing. Um Unless you're a huge business like Winchester or like a Federal or, you know, like a Remington, um, banks, let's see, I guess from a, from a traditional financial standpoint, banks really, uh, really don't like the defense industry. Um, so it forces manufacturers to basically take what they can get. So anybody that has uh, a business and they want to deal with, say, for instance, like a big box store. Um, a lot of times there'll be net terms, um, so that's that's financially constraining, right? So your balance sheet looks looks terrible when it comes to that. Um, it'll be you know net sixty, net ninety sometimes uh, for manufacturers to get paid on ammunition that they ship out. And uh, so where's the rest of that money coming from? It's it's uh, the answer is it, it it's not. So you know you you're very financially constrained when it comes to manufacturing and. By that, you know, you have the, the it, it, it brings about an inability to be able to supply demand when 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 demand spikes. So, and it's only there are only so many hours in a day when a machine can be running and making ammunition. So, like if there's a big demand, a spike in demand, then there's no way to uh, to satisfy it. Yeah, that, that reminds me of Operation Choke Point back in 2013. Exactly. Sure yeah. So, so the Obama administration targeted ammunition dealers uh yep. and gun through, manufacturers through, and, and, and through, through the banks exactly what happened. yes yes and so if you go for the banks that's the bottleneck on on all sorts of uh financial markets you just have that's to go for the on-ramps and off-ramps that's like for the for the broader conversation around blockchain and crypto in general the regulators don't have to ban crypto they just have to ban the on and off-ramps and that's that's really what they do when they want to you know constrict these marketplaces Yep, yep, and uh, you know that's that's a, that's a good point. But uh, you know, as for now, I mean, you know that the 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 liquidity of the like the Web three community. I mean, this this is what uh, we're hoping to be able to have access to and be able to uh, push this project down the road. 
That's super cool. I, I imagine you guys could do a ton of events with you know DAOs and organizations that are philosophically aligned. I, I think for anybody who's a fan of Bitcoin and crypto and other things, you know, the Second Amendment is is an extremely powerful. Um, you know, uh, it's an extremely powerful idea that has really motivated a lot of the innovation in our own uh, society in America. It's like the right that secures all the other rights. So yeah, I think exactly. looked into doing more we're, stuff we're, with, yeah. We're, 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 I'm sorry, but we're, we're, in the, in the, you bring it up another good point here. I mean, you think about it, like, you know, typically like the crypto itself is, you know, it's attractive to people that don't really like the government and they don't like the visibility the government has. Um, so, you know, the ammo community and the crypto community, you know, obviously they couldn't be more different as far as, you know, what they, what they represent, but like, you know, their, their ideas and their morals and their values are basically the same. Like, you know, everybody wants sort of, you know, to do what they want to do with their money and be able to have privacy and be able to, uh, you know, just kind of live their lives. And, you know, we, we're, we're, we're basically merging and marrying two worlds, uh, that, that, you know, I, that, I mean, it, it, the thought of doing it, we came up with it about two years ago, and uh, it's taken a lot of iterations, and, and the development has been, you know, it's, it's probably been a little bit slower, but we've also been very methodical and, and have, uh, have thought, thought through the process a lot. So we, we just, um, we're really happy to be, where we are right now and just hope uh hope that it, it really takes off and and uh we think that it will super interesting yes i to go for it yeah so um you know I, I don't know most if most people know but i'm from canada so it's a little different obviously well completely different for the uh we don't have the first amendment and we don't also don't really have much gun laws which i wish we did uh or no not you know i wish most canadians could have it now, when you're looking at the world of RWA, does Canada still have a constitution? Yeah, I mean, not really. I remember when the whole pandemic thing happened; they pretty much debunked it, and they're just like, "Oh, it's old." Literally, like, this place is garbage. That's all I gotta say. I gotta move to Florida immediately. Um, but the one thing I actually wanted to comment on and ask a question, uh, I posed a question here was with RWAs. I love how it's very universal because it can really be in the hands of anybody and any type of consumer. Um, now, when you're looking at this type of niche specifically, um, how does that really affect um, Canada and like other countries that don't really have this type of law? Um, I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts here. As far as the, uh, the ammunition side goes? Yeah, ammunition side, but also like how can people really benefit from RWAs if, they were, if this was kind of the, you know, if this was the niche for it, right? Right. Well, I mean... You know, that's another thing we we wanted to help. And, and honestly, like, we know that there's shipping regulations. I mean, we, we might not be able to redeem everywhere in the world, but this would allow people to play the market and speculate based upon, you know, if, they, if they're if they the air of the ground, if they're, you know, have, have like, depending upon their worldly views and, you know, they... They want to participate in a market where it's kind of off limits. This gives them that option, basically. I mean, you know, that's that's but that's pretty much all we'll have for for places that are really restricted. Um, I, I guess that's that's pretty much the answer. Um, I, I don't really have much more than that, to be honest. Well, let me let me ask you this, Chris. Right? So, like, I, I guess if I'm understanding her question correctly, it's like, what benefits does this bring, maybe, to the industry as a whole, to the maybe the end consumer? So it's like. Obviously, like from a supply chain perspective, right? That's, I mean, check, right? Benefit numero uno. Uh, counterfeit prevention, I would say, right? Um, I guess on the blockchain side, like you can you can automate a lot of these things, right? Like with like a lot of automated transactions, right? Which at that point now, I think to what Brett was saying earlier, was like, now you have enhanced security, right? Like you have the blockchain at your back. Like that's a big deal. That's right. a really big deal. Yeah. So we've, um, you know, we, we've done a lot of thinking about that too. And, you know, we, we've seen, we've seen corruption in the ammunition world, um, you know, at the highest levels, we've seen illicit trade. I mean, you name it, we've pretty much seen it over the years. And, uh, this, this hopefully adds another layer of security to, um, to that. 
to, to that aspect. I mean, we, 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 we really don't want ammunition and guns being in, being in the hands of wrong people, right? So by doing it this way, at least there's another layer of security through like our KYC and AML. Obviously, you know, we're realistic about it. We know that, you know, all that, we, we, it probably can be, you know, there, there's ways around that, but we've done our part at least to be able to, to do some checks and balances on, on, on people that redeem. I think that's totally the narrative. Yeah, that that is exactly the the way to frame this discussion. Like you're bringing transparency to the supply chain. You're bringing visibility into the ammunition market. So yeah. from that perspective, you're doing the industry a massive favor. And I think regulators and uh, all, you know the government should be supportive of these sorts of initiatives. Yeah, hundred percent, Tyler. That's that, I mean that's that's one of the things we really set out to do in the beginning. I mean we we've like I said before, we have seen it all. I mean, we've we've uh, we've shipped ammunition and aid to countries that need it, only to have it like offered to us uh, for sale the same ammunition uh, like a couple of months later. Uh, we we had a we had a significant uh, brokering business, and that's how that's how it all came about. Um, so it's 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 crazy the way that the the um, the world is right now and and we're just trying to do our part to help out love it yeah alex go for it yeah i just wanted to answer salam's uh question about that or salamander now that i open up the uh profile um it happens to you know when it comes to ammunition and stuff that's what's more of a controlled i don't want to say it's controlled substance obviously because it's not a substance but it's a controlled item um, in, in the U.S. and almost every country in the world. When it comes to RWAs, though, you have to remember is that the token only represents your ownership of that real-world asset. That real-world asset, um, depending on how it is tokenized, will have different regulations attached to it. So if you take, for example, real estate and put it into a holding company and tokenize the, the, the shares of stock of the holding company, so the, the RWA token is actually a share of stock, um, then you have to follow the securities laws of said country that you issued the secu- where the security essentially is issued from. Um, but if you're tokenizing the, if you're not using like, let's say a holding company to do so, and, you, and it's a, let's say a controlled um, product, then you kind of, you have to follow obviously the laws of said controlled product. And you know, from what it sounds like, Ammo's is doing that. Um, but, it really depends on what the asset class is. And it also depends on where the issuing jurisdiction is. So, you know, for example, there's securities laws for the U S which are overarching, overbearing, um, gatekeeping. I mean, I can go on and on about how pathetically terrible U S securities laws are. Um, but there are other jurisdictions in the world that are, that have better securities laws where your transfer restrictions are not as, um, are not as controlled and you can actually have, where the technology can actually free the transfer of tokens and the commerce that, and the economy that can be done with RWAs. So that was actually going to be my question, Alex, right? And, and Chris, maybe to like, you, you, maybe you both can kind of chime in on this, but how, Tyler, do you remember how we had the debate in one of the first episodes and one of the first shows that we had where it's like, how do you actually ensure that that, let's say that NFT that represents either, you know, that, um, that shipment of ammo, right, is actually that shipment of ammo, right? Like the blockchain is one thing. I think this is what people really confuse a lot of times where it's like, how do I make sure that that is in, like that that's there? Yeah, it's the biggest problem in the industry that we'll all at some point see a massive headline about, which is, you know, XYZ project decided to not in fact actually secure the asset off chain. So I would turn it over to Ammo be like, and, and ask you, so how do we get people comfortable with this idea that you guys actually have custody of the ammo off chain? What sort of mechanisms are you doing to protect and kind of like Maverick's point earlier, you know, the protections through the existing legal system that exists for these tokenized assets. How do we think about that? So people can have confidence that when they buy these tokens, they actually are getting access to the underlying. So the, uh, the best we can do, I mean, every, all the transactions obviously are, are going to be reported on chain, but we're, we're, we have uh, contacted a third-party auditing uh, company that are going to be able to, to 
accurately basically uh, report on what we have in our custody. And that's really all we can do. I mean, it's a, it's a, just give that impartiality and, 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 you know, hopefully people will understand and, and, and be comfortable with it. Have you guys talked with the uh, chain link team at all? Uh, no, not yet. Cause they have some pretty cool stuff where they're literally doing real time attestations for vaulted uh, precious metals. And so that's something that they, they can do when they work with different third party auditors and things. So happy to okay. connect you if that's helpful. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Send, us, send us a message and we can, uh, we can definitely uh, connect and see what they can do to help us out. Sounds like, Sweet. sounds like there's a big use case for us. Yeah, definitely. I think just one, one of my personal beliefs is that the more you can use, uh, you know, oracles and oracle networks to provably verify that these custodians, these, auditors have actually done their job to verify this stuff in the real world uh that's that's the vector that most people are super concerned about and so the more material you put out there to, to assuage people's concerns that's the whole point of our platform at rwa world we're eventually going to start including uh, as much of this off-chain verification on every single one of the companies that we list in our database and so ammo crypt would be exactly you know that we would want to put as much of that information on our site as as possible so that way when people are coming to the space they can assess what sort of security assumptions what sort of uh, legal considerations what jurisdiction limits that they should be aware of because uh, it was a really great point that maverick made which is you know there's a, an existing legal framework and then there's the physical custody and there's all these different parameters that you really just need to understand before you should be comfortable you know investing in these things so we really appreciate that yeah definitely and you know i guess it's kind of easy to, you know, sometimes overlook that. I mean, we're, we're not, this is not a scam. This is not something that uh, is going to be a rug pull or anything like that. And we just, um, you know, any, anything we can do to make people feel comfortable, to be able to believe and, and to buy into our project, obviously we'll do. Um, but, yeah, it's... Um, We've taken so much time and consideration in, in developing this this platform and this system. Uh, you know, a, anything that we can do to improve it upon this point and make it take it take it uh, obviously to the next level. That's that's what we need to do. And uh, good good point there. And and I think people, the more comfortable people are with it, and once the uh, the system starts working and people start talking about how easy the redemption process is and they physically got their ammo, then. You know, then it'll just pretty much take care of itself. If I can give you one, one little bit of advice, don't like if it's unsolicited, don't ever say it's not a scam. People don't like, like that's just right off the bat. They don't like it's it's it, that's I'm I'm being dead serious actually when okay. I say that yeah. only because people like that's exactly where their head goes. So I'm just being I'm just being straight. But uh, okay. I don't know who. For, yeah, sorry, guy. That's that's all right. Yeah, and um, I mean it's a very obviously it's a very serious 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 subject for us and and like we you know we, we we need to take all the precautions that we can to be able to make people feel feel more comfortable and uh it's just uh yeah i mean the, the the thought never really crossed our mind that that people wouldn't think that it was above board to be honest Oh, we're the most skeptical group out here. Are you kidding me? In crypto, we it's you're guilty by like until proven innocent. There is no innocent until proven guilty out here. Right off the bat, okay. everybody's guilty. Literally. Literally. Um, I'm gonna let Maverick go, by the way, just because um I uh, per usual Tyler pretty much answered everything I was gonna ask. Um so thanks thanks for that, Tyler. Thanks for taking my voice from me per usual. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but no, seriously. <laughs> this is because we're on the same <laughs> yeah, you're good, bro. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring up chain link attestations, and then as soon as you said it, I was like, ah! <laughs> so that's, that's fine. But uh, Maverick, go ahead, bro. Yeah, that's, that's really funny. Actually, I met my best friend's uh, new girlfriend last night, and I completed one of his sentences, and she like looked at me like with, this, with these eyes. Um, uh, especially since I haven't seen her in the year they dated. Anyways, so... Um, uh, what is it? When it comes, Tyler, you were talking about like uh, chain link and, and proving, you know, on chain attestations, for, basically for uh, for audits and whatnot. The thing that you have to, that we as, as an industry have to take into account is that that you know, yes, you need to have on chain oracles to understand things like you know, putting audit data on chain, putting price data on chain, um, 
but it's also the quality of the data that you put on there. Just because an Oracle feeds it doesn't necessarily make mean that it's a, it's a, let's say accurate data. So again, Maven <laughs> down below, which will be launching as our flagship lending product on Maverick has a decentralized Oracle system. So anybody can go and spool up uh, like a satellite node as we call them. And then they can, they can push price data on chain, but then this happens to be like, okay, so when we start tokenizing real world assets, starting with, uh, real estate on the Maverick blockchain, how do we then get the price data for the, these, you know, real world assets on chain? So you, then you have to go into get appraising. Um, but it's ha one thing to have an appraisal. It's another thing also, let's say like, you know, you have a, an appraised price and then you have like a trading price. But what I was going to kind of dive into is, so in Dubai, the Dubai Multicollateral Center, the DMCC has one of the largest um, safes in the world for storing commodities. But at some point, you have to trust, regardless of whether or not that data is put on chain or not, uh, sorry, when that data is put on chain, you have to trust that the data that's being fed into the Oracle is is reliable. Because yes, you know, you can have 100 tons of gold sitting there, or you can have one, but the Oracle will just repeat what's fed into it. So um, when it comes to Oracles, we also have to be careful. Um, we have to, let's say, vet you know, don't trust, verify. We have to verify the data that is being put into um, into the Oracle. And that's why it's important that when you issue these RWAs, the documentation for them is is open as well. Uh, because when it comes to real estate, you know, ammo is different, whiskey is different. Um, our chief of staff is somewhere down below. He's here, uh, Sam, um, who's got a friend that's doing tokenized whiskey and they store the whiskey for you. Um the when it comes to real estate like you can actually see that this holding company there will be reports you can see that the deed belongs in this holding company that that documentation needs to be out there in public and it's not enough that you know oh this token technically owns this house and then this this there's a holding company but you don't know what's in the holding company so we have to ensure that what's in those um in that data that's being fed on chain is you know uh, couldn't agree more it I wouldn't say trustable, but like it's there. Yeah, it's the Oracle problem, right? Like, how do you know that the Oracle's being truthful and garbage in, garbage out, right? You can take off chain data and put it on chain and it can just be crap data. Um, I wanted to go to Ray because th you were about to say something, Ray, and I think I might have cut you off. No, maybe not. I, I guess he's not going to speak. All I'm going to say is that we just talked about tokenized whiskey and tokenized ammo in the same space. So, like, my Florida man side, just like, was just like itching to come out. My Florida man side was like, "Oh my god, this is the best space ever!" Yeah, so we need to that. tokenize barbecue next, William. <laughs> <laughs> William, that's your next video. Damn right? alligators! Yeah, uh, that, that will be my next video. Probably is I'm gonna go full Florida man and just like have all my guns and all my whiskey bottles and be like, "Have you ever heard of the blockchain?" <laughs> <laughs> to all Dude, my you guys friends. all gotta go check out William's videos. They're so good. He did a video on Silencio that was just cracking me up. So we're, gonna, we're gonna see Will walking down the street with like a fucking shotgun over his shoulder with a bottle of whiskey in his fucking his other hand. Oh my god! But wait, imagine the, calculating the noise. They're tokenized. It's fine. Yo, calculating the noise of every gunshot for like thirty. Yeah. Now you can do it for thirty minutes. You can't. Do, you don't have to do twenty minutes now. And like a hive map around his head or something. You know what I mean? Like he's just trying to optimize everything at every turn. Honey, I said the, the lucid, the game. lucid dream, the lucid dream. Yeah. Headband, yeah. Too cool. <laughs> So, no, so I, I want to kind of like, so Alex, I, that is exactly what I was getting at. Um, and, and Chris, I think what Alex just said is like some of like really, when you really think about it, it's like there's going to be a level of trust. I don't, the name escapes me, but there's a company that's tokenizing uh, Pokemon cards. And, and the point I want to make here is um, oh, Courtyard. Perfect. Thank you. Courtyard partnered with like recognizable brands, Brinks, right? Like you think like, you're American, you think Brinks, you think security, right? So ultimately, like right off the bat, there's that level of like, okay, like I feel a little bit like the consumer is going to feel a little bit like safer. I know, I know I did when I saw Brinks, it was like, oh my God, I associate Brinks with security. So like there is that level of trust, right? So there's going to be these brands that are ultimately like, I think maybe like thinking of a partnership, maybe Chris, with, with, with some of these, because I know when I first saw Courtyard, that is the first thing that stuck out to me. It's like Brinks. Why do they need 
brings. And then when I really started to think about it, it's like, okay, yeah, there has to be a level of trust. Like I can mail in a, a like a totally like fake Pokemon card, right? But it's like, are, is somebody going to jack it in the mail? Like, I don't know. They're sending a Brinks truck. Oh, okay. Now I'm more at ease. That makes sense, Chris? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, it's, it's very interesting, and that's a good thought. You know, we we um, you know, we're obviously uh, open for, for for partnerships in the industry. I mean, we're my brother and I we, when we founded this uh, this project. I mean, we 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 knew we knew obviously the defense world, but we knew a little bit about uh, the the crypto world, and you know, we're learning more every day. So, if there's any ever. Any other thoughts or you know brainstorming that needs to happen to be able to uh, to be able to help us uh, in that regard? Then we, you know, we we're open to it. You're in the yeah. right place, brother. That's yeah, sure. we we actually um, were we we spoke to Brinks because they Brinks offers a a wallet security solution mm -hmm. um, for protecting private keys. And so, if you can imagine, like your Maverick wallet, you know, powered by Brinks. Um, instead of, you know, like a seed phrase, we're, we're talking to different providers um, for different MPC solutions for wallets. But I think it's, it's really, uh, it's not just on the custody side of things, but also on the, the password, like the seed phrase protection side of things for wallets. Because if we ever want mainstream to, to actually adopt crypto, we have to have easier accounts to use. I mean, wallet, wallet accounts, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, your grandma's not going to be remembering 12 or 24 seed phrases. So with Brinks and Fireblocks and all these other companies kind of making their name in terms of security, it's not just the physical security of of the assets, but it's also going to be the, the, the security over non-custodial solutions. And I think that's, that's somewhere where Brinks, um, you know, they can take their brand heritage that they have there and migrate it over to you know, kind of like, uh, we'll migrate over to the, to the crypto world. If you think about like, you know, what is actually going to be sent in a Brinks truck in 10 years from now, if everything's going to be tokenized, for example, gold will sit in vaults and barely move. Fine. There'll be some like fine artwork. Cash is not going to be sent back and forth as much anywhere near their, their business model is going to go down. So if they don't want to go the way of like Kodak, when Kodak had the opportunity to buy SanDisk and they didn't, and instead they just, you know, kind of lost their entire kind of a monopoly on, on film production, um, Brinks will have to migrate in order to stay alive for security. But no, but Alex, think about this for a second, right? I think that's where the courtyard model really plays in is because nothing, the only thing that changes hands is the NFTs, right? It's like, you, like they have uh, a vault, right? That's there. And ultimately, it's it's just the NFT that like the like the the transfer of ownership that's kind of going back and forth. Now, with something like this, right, there's going to be like a physical delivery aspect to it. So I think it it I don't know, but I feel like that like that like the, the, the hey, hey, Wolf eBay is about to come in too, bro. It's it's about to be up, bro. With all the with all with all this, man. Don't want to say the sound manager's laughing at me because I'll probably get in trouble. But yeah. Uh, one percent in, one percent out, man. It's going to be like the new way. Like so, yeah. Shout out to Brinks. Shout out to to eBay. The Web three teams are super dope. So excited to to see all this, man. Well, Emo, I think what you were saying is like it's just the NFT transferring. What I'm what I'm going for is is like how does that NFT transfer when you when you're using your wallet? Let's say it's in your in your Maverick wallet or your MetaMask, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and you want to transfer that NFT via smart contract, you have to authorize that transaction. Right. And that transaction actually taking place can be protected by Brinks. Like Fireblocks has um, built in protection mechanisms for you know when you can you can say like you know what you can put limits in your Fireblocks. Uh, wallets where you could say, you know what, only I, I can only transfer um, authorized transactions from my wallet between the hours of 7 to 8 p.m. And then, so, you know, no one can kind of like hack you and then at like five try and make a transfer. Um, and so there are all these different protectionary mechanisms that you can put into transferring the tokens or transferring the NFTs. And that's what I was going to about like uh, wallet security provided by these legacy security companies yeah that, that that actually is a very very good point and we definitely will will we'll look into that i mean we you know and i think you you touched on this a little while ago um but you said the the grandma who's not going to be able to remember her 12 seed phrases and you know the onboarding process for people that aren't really in in involved in crypto or or you know have the, the capacity to be able to, to to do so i mean it's um 
you, you know, th those people are potential customers as well. And we have, um, yeah, like I said before, there's there's over 100 million gun owners in the country. There's probably right now, I mean, maybe you guys know more stats than I do, but like there's probably 25 to 30 million crypto users in the U.S. Is that, does that seem fairly accurate? Okay. Repeat that number. Anybody have a number on that? I don't have a more recent figure, but yeah, I remember the number's pretty good, but it's still not where it should be. Yeah, right. So, what, what, what did you what would you say the the number was? Is probably I mean the, the the best sources that we saw were between twenty five and thirty million crypto users. Well, if yeah, I think thirty million is correct. If I remember hearing well. right. So, so if there's if there's one hundred and twenty million gun owners, I mean, if we convert half those gun owners to crypto users, we've already doubled the price or, or doubled the, the size of the crypto market in the U.S. So, what we've really been focused on is 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 being able to onboard and offboard people as easy as possible. And any of the ideas that that you know you guys, are, you know, I've heard several today that maybe make that process a little bit easier. And uh, really thankful for um, for all the feedback. Yeah, this was super. Well, I totally fun. agree with that. You have to. Oh yeah, sorry. Went through. Go ahead. Oh no, that was me. Sorry, I was just saying this has been super informative, and I got to run because I got to get ready for another call. But um, thank you, Ammo, so much for this turned into more of an AMA than I expected. But I'm super glad that it went in this direction because I'm really interested in learning more about the platform. So thanks for answering all yeah. our questions. Yeah, of course, and uh, you know, keep up with us online, and uh, you know, if, if we, are, we have a we have a pre-sale going through uh, the end of March, and then there's going to be an open round um, in April that for for non-US uh, investors, and uh, then probably sometime in the third quarter we're going to be uh, able to sell in the US market, and we're you know we're 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 heading that direction. More like open round. There you go. Tyler, like, what did you classify them? What, what did you classify? Yeah, seriously. Emma, what did you classify? Uh, what did you end up classifying them as? We haven't yet. So we're gonna we're gonna meet with Chris for sure and try to figure it out. But yeah, like you said, it's consumables. But I don't know. I mean, it's definitely a new category, right, Ray? Like we're gonna have to come up with a new one. So um, I think we have like a miscellaneous category for now. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, I love call it, it we like have to, a. Maybe we call it like a real world consumable instead of an asset. Yeah, possibly. I, I mean, put it under the freedom category, Tyler. <laughs> the freedom <laughs> category. That's right. Let's go. Hey. I agree. If you would have told me yesterday, <laughs> ammo. What? I was gonna say, if you would have told me yesterday that uh, we would be making the case for ammo being the onboarding tool for crypto, yeah, I probably wouldn't have believed you. I would have been like, uh. Not really. I'm not really sure, but yeah, um, this the, this has been a super interesting conversation. Um, Chris, I'd, I'd love to have you back at some point in the future just so we can kind of, you know, whether it's like, you know, after the uh, the token launch or, or, or the raise or whatever, man, like this was super, super interesting. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate you having us. And uh, yeah, I'd love to come back on at some point and, you know, as we're as we're progressing and, and give guys an update. That'd be great. Yeah, incredible, and I mean, yeah, everybody. Obviously, thanks for the contributions, Tyler. Chris, what chain? Yeah. What? Oh, sorry, Chris. What chain are you guys building on? So we're on Polygon. Gotcha. We'll have to talk because uh, we're launching our own chain for specifically for bringing our um, network of of real estate and RWAs basically onto our own chain and integrating them with DeFi. So um, the, our whole focus is like. Stop hyper focusing on rebuilding infrastructure and focus on actually the 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 onboarding and mainstream adoption of using this technology for for building financial opportunities and and, and uh, access. So we'll have to talk to you about uh, perhaps um, coming over to the Maverick chain. But I'll DM you. Okay. All right. Sounds great. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah. if anybody's interested, all, a lot of information, the white paper, you know, everything. Uh, Everything's on our website, ammocrypt.io, and there's a there's a spot on there apply for pre-sale as well. And you know, I really appreciate all the feedback, guys, and look forward to talking to you again. Yeah, man. Blockchain, NFTs, ammo, DeFi. You know, we married them all together on this program. So good stuff, Alex. Thanks for coming through. Um, Will Scott, Cody, I appreciate you guys. Uh, Safe investor, Brad Tyler. This is Ray. Uh, this has been dope. But uh, yeah. On to next week. I'll see you guys later. Peace. All right. Take care. Thanks. See you guys. Bye, guys.